Why? Hello and welcome everybody. It is Pox again. So today I don't actually have a unique build for you guys or anything, but I want to talk to you guys a little bit about my wonder character that I promised I was going to make quite a long time ago. So I'm going to be playing a pure elemental scion wander. Uh, the reason why I'm playing scion is I feel it's better for mapping in my opinion, due to the reflect immunity makes it so you can party really well. Uh, reflect immunity basically by getting elementalist for 50% reduced reflect, along with primeval force for 10% reduced reflect, and then the pantheon for an additional 25% reduced reflect puts you at 85% reduced reflect damage taken. Um, I'm also going to play a pretty tanky character. I don't know what most people are doing for their uh, wonders, but this is probably going to look pretty similar. Um, I plan on going through Duelist in here, coming up to Art of the Gladiator and grabbing the life here, and then finishing... Well, I don't know exactly which order I'm going to do first, but I plan on coming up through here and grabbing, like, Fusilade or Fusilade along with the crit nodes here. And our Uber Lab is basically going to be chopping off all of Scion's start and starting from Ranger for the additional life here. In terms of uniques I plan on using for the build, uh, Tempest Binding for our Kinetic Blast, uh, and Belly of the Beast for our Barrage. Also, Lycosade because it gives us, essentially, uh, you cannot ever miss, which is one of my main things I hate with attack builds, so this is really cool. Um, and also, I have, I've been leveling with a Storm Prison. I'm 65, I have not ever swapped out this weapon in any type of way. So just to go over my gear, I'm using Volker's Guidance. They just give life res and some damage. Uh, Red Blade Tramplers, life, res, movement speed. Prism Weave gives a sane amount of Ellie damage while leveling. Belly the Beast for life. Uh, just some shit jewelry, really. Nothing really special. Same thing with this one. And that pretty much concludes the gear. Now, obviously I didn't have Tempest Binding or Belly the Beast leveling up. I just put these on at level 62. Um, this is a Herald of Ice Mana Reservation Helmet as well to get me Herald of Ice going. But for leveling a Wander, honestly, it was pretty much a breeze. Uh, the links I'm using right now, I would I don't really know if I can recommend them. I haven't played around to see the best links. This is just what I'm using at the moment. I've got Kinetic Blast, Elemental Damage with Attacks, Increased Crit, GMP. That's in my Tempest Binding. And in my chest piece, I've got Increased Crit, GMP, Added Lightning, Barrage, and Elemental Damage with Attacks. This, my Barrage links, I'll definitely be swapping out later. I don't know about my Kinetic Blast. I'll probably drop Crit at some point and get a Diamond Flask. Anyway, let me go ahead and show you guys how the character performs as of right now. So this is Aqueduct, which I plan on leveling in Blood Aqueduct probably up until level 70, maybe like 72. Uh, just because it's honestly such good XP, it's an easy breeze, and I don't feel like gearing up my character right now because it's kind of annoying. Uh, <laughs> so I'm probably just going to stay here for a little bit. I will tell you that leveling up, I did have issues with single target damage. Um, Cruel Lazaro was actually a bit difficult for me, and... Um, I forgot some of the act bosses were a bit of a pain in the ass. It's not necessarily that like I didn't do damage, it's more of like when you're leveling up your wander, there's so much gear that you just haven't invested into yet, and it's just difficult to balance between your life and damage values early game. End game it gets to be a bit easier when you have more flexibility with your gear, but beginning game was a bit frustrating. Um, but it honestly wasn't really that bad. Super early game was actually very easy, uh, I'll explain leveling with that in a little bit. But don't expect to have good single target damage on a Wander unless you're going to invest into quite a bit of gear with like some crit multi, um, additive damage, etc. Now this is going to be the first Vault Pack character that I'll be playing in quite a while, so I'm pretty excited to see how I like it. I typically do not like Vault Pack at all, it kind of like really puts me off not having any life regen. Uh, but we'll see exactly what happens. So that's pretty much the character. I mean, honestly, that's how it plays out as of right now. Single target damage could be better, but I mean, I don't have wet on any piece of gear, uh, and I don't even have a weapon. This is like this is like a retarded weapon, to be completely honest with you guys. <laughs> so, um, in terms of leveling the character, I want to show you guys what I use, and it was honestly a fucking breeze. So, leveling your wander, like starting from very very early level, you want to use a storm cloud. Stormcloud gives you super good attack speed along with flat lightning damage and being as I'm a scion I pretty much just branched out through here and I got poachers aim which gives you pierce pretty much right away costs nothing So this gives your split arrow the ability to pierce targets 
uh, move in, grab Harrier. All this attack speed is great for elemental scaling. Once you get to right here, you get a static electricity. Static electricity just skyrockets your damage and you're literally like, you don't have to worry about anything anymore. All you have to do is just come up here, grab coordination. I swear to you, you're good to go. <laughs> you don't have to worry about anything. Um, in terms of like the links I used, I'm pretty sure it was just like kinetic blast, GMP. Obviously, if you don't have GMP, you can't get it yet. Um, but before then, actually, let me talk about before then. For split arrow, um, it's pretty much just split arrow, added cold, added lightning, and then you get like faster attacks, wed, uh, and you're good to go. And then for single target, you just want to put in barrage with the tabula rasa. Uh, and it makes it really, really easy. I actually used a dual five link all the way up until 62, which is when I got my Tempest Binding uh, and my Belly of the Beast. So anyway, I just wanted to give you guys a little bit of updates like I was talking about. I'll do one more quick clear for you guys if you guys are curious. And then I can kind of talk a little bit of the pros and cons between San and some other classes. So the three more common picks, I guess you could say for Wanders, and this is not including Inquisitor because I don't really know too much about them, is you have Raider, you have Pathfinder, and you have Scion. So some, some advantages of not playing a Scion is if you play Raider or Pathfinder, they both offer you elemental immunity pretty much 100% of the time. You're pretty much permanently immune to Shock, Freeze, and Ignite. And the reason why this is really good, and actually with Pathfinder, maybe even Bleed. I don't know on that one. I'm not 100% sure. Um, but the reason why that's so good is because it frees up your flasks and allows you to run a ton of ele or sorry, unique flasks like Vingtar, Dying Sun, Adzuri's Promise, which actually I have to get an Adzuri's Promise because it's huge for this build. Um, so that's kind of like the huge benefit of that. If you plan on playing a Pathfinder, I'd highly recommend for you to invest into a Dying Sun, as Dying Sun will end up giving you three projectiles once you get all the flask effect, and that really brings out a huge potential of Pathfinder. If you don't really want to invest super heavy into flasks, I'd recommend going Raider. Now, of course, you're still free to do whatever you'd like. Um, Raider also gets the elemental immunity along with like the frenzy charges and everything. I will say that I talked with uh, Press Start to Pause, who's been playing Wanders for quite a bit, and she brought up a pretty interesting point, which kind of veered me away from playing Raider, and that's, it's kind of hard to get the life that you want while investing into so many different things, like branching all the way up here to get your crit wand nodes, going all the way down here to get your leech nodes, then trying to get 200% life, and then on top of that, you're trying to get all your two-point jewels, maybe even three-point jewels, and frenzy charges on top of that. It's just kind of, it's for me at least, it was it was too much. I was spreading my build out too much. So I decided to go more on Pathfinder, or sorry, uh, Scion. I don't know why I said Pathfinder. Um, and through Scion, you just get a little bit of the best of both worlds. So like you would get Deadeye, uh, which is what I personally picked, which is Pierce two additional targets, so I don't have to worry about Pierce. I can honestly remove this jewel. Um, you get increased prod speed, which is always nice. Projectiles gain damage as they travel further. That's just, again, a nice little damage increase. And you get an additional projectile. I really do like the additional projectile. It helps a bit with the clear speed. It helps a bit with the spread of the attack. And it does wonders for your barrage, since adding a... Uh, extra projectile to barrage is basically like giving it a multiplier. There is one other huge downside to playing Scion, and the fact is that, and I could be a bit wrong on this one, but Raider gets movement speed per frenzy charge, Pathfinder gets flask effect and just movement speed steroids. So playing a Scion, you are a little bit, you're not going to be as fast as the other characters unless you invest into, you know, tons of mobility. And in that case, if you invest into mobility, you could just play the other characters. So there's pretty much pros and cons to everything you play. Um, but I think Scion is just going to be a bit more of my play style. For some reason, I had this sudden urge to just run into those bears and just eat it to the face because of my RF character. <laughs> Feels bad habits, man. Alright, anyway, that's pretty much about it. Hope you guys had a wonderful time. Hope you guys enjoyed yourselves. Remember, if you did, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. And remember, you can catch me streaming live every day at twitch.tv slash pox. Hope you guys have a wonderful time. I'll see you boys all tomorrow.